Greetings and welcome to Vanderbilt University School of Nursing's Informatics 101. I'm Patty Sangstack and I'm the director of the Nursing Informatics Specialty Program here at the School of Nursing. And I'm Maggie Sweetlick. I'm Vice President of Nursing uh, Informatics and CNIO at Anova Health. So Maggie, thank you very much for coming to chat with me today. I know it was last minute, so I am very pleased that you're here today. I know it's you're my here pleasure. for I know you're here for graduation. You're graduating with your DNP from Vanderbilt yes, tomorrow, I am. right? Yes, I am. And you just were downstairs giving this presentation at a podium on this topic. Yes. Yes. So the the, the topic is Oh, the topic we better is. we better say what the topic is, right? Right. Yes, decreasing the burden of nursing documentation. Uh, we created a tool uh, to um, evaluate our current documentation in our electronic health records and look for strategies and and ways to decrease that and get our nurses back to the bedside where they belong. Well, this is this is a hot topic, isn't it? Yes, it is. I have heard again and again and not just at the organizational level but at the national level too about organizations that are and federal agencies that are looking at this burden of documentation so you know i'm thinking about the um well you know it was part of the 21st century cures act there is actually a section in there that talks about the reduction of burden. And CMS has been working with the Office of the National Coordinator for Health IT um, mm -hmm. in an initiative called Patients Over Paperwork. And they've been doing some things to help to decrease some of the, the burden, particularly around the areas of reimbursement. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I also know that as part of that 21st Century Cures Act, there's been some work that the ONC, the Office of the National Coordinator, has published about a strategy plan to continue to reduce the burden of documentation in the electronic health record to do what you just said, reduce the time that our clinicians, our nurses, our docs, um, really everybody caring for patients are spending at the computer and not with the patient. That's right, Patty. Yes, I think in there it's um, something that's long overdue. I think we really hung our hat on having an electronic health record to support our care and the delivery of that care, and I think it's done wonders, but suddenly we have found ourselves overburdened with too much documentation, uh, and too much time spent documenting, and um, less time really giving that one-to-one -one meaningful care that we our patients so deserve. Did you read that uh, piece that came out from the, I think it was in, Fortune, the Kaiser Foundation, called Death by a Thousand Clicks. <laughs> yes, I did. Did you read that? <laughs> yes. I'm so true you, sometimes. You would think the EHR is a horrible thing, but I mean, truly, you've read the literature, and I know you have because you had to for school. I, guess I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, that shows a lot of success around improving care delivery using the electronic health record. So lots of organizations are trying to figure out okay, and lots of nurse informaticists. Um, who I hope are watching today are trying to figure out. So, what do we do? How can we, how can we help to decrease the amount of time that our nurses are spending at the uh, computer? And I know that your DNP project, which I'm so proud of, um, addressed just that. Exactly. Can you tell us a little bit about what you did? Sure, absolutely. I think one of the things that. Um, most organizations are looking at, because we all admit patients at one point or another, we've looked at the nursing admission assessment and decided it was time to pare it down and take use that as... Was it too long? <laughs> just a little no. bit too long. Too many, lo <laughs> too, hundreds of clicks and, and many, many minutes too long um, for our patients. And so one of the things we looked at was what is the value of the nursing documentation that we collect? And so um, we created a tool to use uh, not only the nursing assessment, but evaluate the questions and the fields within that assessment against meaningful criteria. And so um, 10 criteria were established in, with a little help from my friends at uh, one of my project sites. And we looked at um, coming up with about 10 criteria that would be meaningful. And so- Should we share those 10? Uh, Do you remember them well, off the top can, of your head? Well, I can remember quite a few. Uh, I think it's important that we looked at, um, does a nurse need to document the information or uh, can it be somebody else? Good um, question. It, is it a required uh, element from our, our regulatory friends at the Joint Commission, CMS and others? Mm -hmm. um, is it used in reporting? Uh, is it used in planning for uh, uh, care delivery? Um, communication. Is it used mm -hmm. in clinical decision support? So some of these questions are tied very 
tightly to the decision support that we make. One of the things that we also asked is, um, is the element documented somewhere else in our chart? Uh, so could it be could it be done elsewhere? And does it need to be a nurse who's asking the questions? And so really, um, that may not be 10, but I think that's a pretty good start. Mm -hmm. And what we did was we uh, brought a focus group together, and we bucketed those into high, medium, and low value. And I let the focus group do the talking. I did not contribute to that in piece of it. And let the, the members of the care team really say, these are the what's important, less important, and, and not really important at all. And so um, those criteria fell into the three different domains of really high, medium, and low in value. And from there, we assigned some um, weighting to those so that we could really differentiate, not really statistically, but differentiate those as we started to go along. Anyway, our project team looked at every individual assessment and, and answered those 10 questions for each about item. each item. And as we did that, the score was automatically totaled and we came up into, we came up with a value score really of for each and every of the 127 assessments that was in our admission. Wow. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. It was a lot of work. So what we found at the end was we were able to kind of um, use some thresholds to group those, those questions and assessments into those that we want to retain those mm -hmm. that we think we should review again, and those that we should just get rid of. And it was funny because um, with the thresholds, we came up with about 40 of the 127 that should be removed. And of those 40, 10 of them had an absolute score value of zero. So I think wow. if we took those out, no one would ever wow. miss them. Well, they, they might not even notice either, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. Um, you know, and the, those, I don't think there were any surprises. Those that came in as high value were either regulatory requirements or used in the discharge planning uh, for the patient, used in decision support uh, uh, somewhere else in the chart. And then in the middle is where the bulk of our assessments fell, and I think that's appropriate. So it makes me wonder, so that is that was great work, and I know that mm -hmm. it was a lot of hard, tedious work because mm -hmm. you basically had to take each element one at a time and ask 10 questions. Correct. I mean, it must have taken a long time to do it, but tedious work, well worth it, and now you have some objective data around being able to remove some things, and I That's think right. that that'll be a real help to the organization as you do that. That's right. Um, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, the, the other thing is, um, this, and this is just not me, and as you mentioned earlier, this is happening across the country, and in addition to our hospitals, um, our vendors are looking at it as well. So the large vendors in the United States are also looking at doing very similar work to this to make sure they can uh, support their uh, clients in helping to keep this as a manageable and meaningful uh, tool. And I know that our vendor partners are also helping us to look at some of the data around how long mm -hmm. our nurses are spending mm -hmm. in the record, and I think that's going to help us do some research going forward. That's right. But I'm wondering, of those, uh, I love that there were 40 items that just scored zero. How did they even well, get in there? Ten, ten, I'm sorry, oh. 10 of the 40 oh, 10 of the 40? were zero. How did yes. they even get in there in the first place? Uh, you uh, know, uh, <laughs> I, you know uh, I guess there are a number of ways that our, our uh, electronic health record has continued to grow and one of those is a patient event or where we've conducted a root cause analysis at the after after the fact and there's a, a recommendation whether it's from an administrator or board of directors or quality folks or maybe just within our clinical teams that they say well you know what to prevent this in the future let's add let's add another question and let's add another question and finally we come up with a very bloated record would you call that self-imposed <laughs> we do it to ourselves. Yes, we do. <laughs> I think so. So it, it makes me think about, so you know I've been working on this this burden framework yes. where, you know, anybody in quality would take a look at the burden because when we hear people talking about the burden, it's this kind of umbrella term right. and it can mean a lot of things. So anybody in quality would say, well, let's do a... Uh, let's do a fishbone diagram or an Ishikawa diagram right. and let's yep. figure out what are the causes of the burden? What are the causes of making our nurses stay at the computer for long periods of time? Mm -hmm. And so I think I want to propose this framework. And so you know I'm working on this. I haven't yes. published it yet and I'm right. working on it with a group of people. But I think that there are really six, I call them six domains of burden. And one of them is regulatory. Mm -hmm. Right, and you mentioned that earlier, right. being you know things that the Joint Commission requires us to document. Another one, and it's huge, is reimbursement. 
Right, so CMS um, mm -hmm. and the other uh, insurers require us to document things so that we can get paid. The other one that is quality. So we know that there's a lot of things that need to be documented for quality reasons. And then another big one is usability. Mm -hmm. um, we know that um, a lot of things that get into the system that we need to look at um, are not in the right place or don't support workflow. So we need to, we need to take a look at that too. And then uh, in a previous segment, we talked about interoperability. Right. A lot of times there's, you know, we're spending a lot of time in the chart because we can't find the data that we need because it didn't follow the patient appropriately. Right. And the last domain is what I'm calling self-imposed, and we've done it to ourselves. And I think that um, we've, we talk about in this series, what can nurse informaticists do? And right. I think today, these, these are things that they can do. You gave a perfect example of what an organization can do. You can mm -hmm. take what's in your nursing admission assessment and try to figure out, are there some things that are not adding value? And I hope you're going to publish your work. Oh, yes, I am. Okay. As a matter of fact. <laughs> and also, too, I think one of the things um, that's this tool that we developed um, can be used to decide whether or not we put something in now. So we can use those same criteria to evaluate a new request if we and see if, if it meets criteria and can we get our requests to a certain threshold and then say, okay, they can put them in. I love that. So you're, can, you can use those 10 questions proactively Correct. as kind of a set of um, guiding principles. That's right. We want to get out, of, uh, out ahead of this burden. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that. And I think that that's another recommendation that we can give to any nurse informaticist who's listening. Are you using a set of guiding principles right. as you're... Um, taking a look at something that might be another addition to the electronic health record for nurses to document. That's Use right. guiding principles. Exactly. Yeah. And if it doesn't meet it, don't put it in. Wonderful. So okay. I want to thank you thank so you. much for coming to join us. Always I know you've had a very busy day and graduations tomorrow, so congratulations again. Um, and so thank for- Thank you. And in, thank you for your mentorship. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> so for those listening, um, I think what we would love for the takeaways today to be are take a look at your guiding principles as you add things to your electronic health record and see if there's some questions you can ask to see if they're truly going to add value. Um, look at what's in your record now. Can you get a group together similar to what um, Maggie did and see if there's a way that you could do some cleanup? I think it's a lot of tedious and a lot of hard work, but I think that there's some things that we can do today to make it better. Absolutely. Anything you want to add? No, try something. I try think something. That's, and, uh, do something. We'll figure out what sticks. This was really a proof of concept mm -hmm. um, and hopefully something that we can now uh, use across um, number of organizations are another area in the chart. So I'm, I'm excited for the future. Excellent. Thank Love you. it. So thank you very much. For those of you listening, please share with your colleagues via social media, email, however you want. We're glad that you listened. And if you have any questions or comments, please send them to the address below. Thank you.